G'day humans, welcome to Safe Space for Dangerous Ideas and is comedy a safe haven for dangerous ideas anymore or has it become stale and timid? Uh, is it a place where you can't say anything for fear of being cancelled? That's been the criticism uh, in recent years. One man who defies uh, such criticism and steamrolls ahead with uh, routines that are so articulate and sharp and honest that his detractors uh, dare not bring him down is Mark Norman. I love an episode like this. Someone who's terribly smart and terribly, terribly funny. Mark was uh, in Australia, was kind enough to come into the old Uncomfortable Conversations studios. I believe uh, the only uh, press that he did in this great continent of ours. And a big thanks to the promoters, Teg Dainty, uh, for uh, arranging that for us. He is uh, a one-of-a-kind comic. He's been on Conan. He's been on Jimmy Fallon. He's been on Stephen Colbert. Uh, he's been on Joe Rogan. And most uh, importantly, Jerry Seinfeld... Uh, saw his act on The Tonight Show and thought, I want that guy to open for me at my shows in New York. Uh, so he gave him a call and uh, the rest is history. Please enjoy the hilarious, the fearless, the one and only, Mark Norman. Well, I feel bad that Sydney is not sunny. For you. This is one of those cities that really shines. Yeah, beautiful. When it's, but when it's warm and it's not warm. And no. ind- indeed, today was wet. But I had yesterday, I did a ferry, I went to Manly, I went to Bondi. I'm wow. all over this goddamn town. You're all over it. it. What do you make of the town? I love it. Of Top. the land. What about the whole. So are you going around the whole nation of Australia? Yes. Is that a fact? Yeah, I did Perth, wow. Adelaide, Sydney, then Brisbane, then Melbourne, then Auckland. You got Brisbane right. But oh. you're still pronouncing the R in Melbourne. 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 It's like a bun. Like a it's like a bun. bun. It's like a pork bun. Just Got call it. it. You know what you should do? You should do your whole Melbourne routine about how they pronounce Melbourne like pork bun. I don't want to be that guy. Just, <laughs> there's a couple. The Qualls of Chlamydia, Down yep. Under. There's yep. too many. Uh, oh, you're all prisoners. Yes, a couple don't do that. We don't like that one. I mean, it is pretty amazing. I was once on a, a, a subway in uh, New York City. You're familiar with those things? They go underground on the train lines. They're very dangerous, and I hope you didn't see a guy jerking it. It was. I saw that. It was the best day of my life many a time. Came back for more the next day. I want to apologize for that again. <clears throat> it was great. No, I used to live in uh, New York City. and uh, Really? So that, yeah, I did. Oh, believe nice. it or not. I lived there for actually most of my professional life. Whoa. I was in New York. I just came back here when I got old. Isn't this better living? New York's a goddamn punch in the dick. Well, what do you think? I mean, I'm sometimes you, it's better living. there's nothing you want more than a little punch in the dick. I look, I like a little punch in the dick, but I don't need a nice... Uh, Francis and Ganyu uppercut. To you don't the sack. want too much. Yeah, it just has to be just right. I haven't seen one rat here. No, I saw a hobo doing a crossword puzzle. <laughs> I mean, you guys are like up, up. To we do snuff. have. We are renowned for having wealthy hobos because, as you say, we're all convicts, so we're all prisoners. And we're I know that's basically hobos. That's touchy. But where's that movie, by the way? How about has what? it been no movie about the first prisoners, Such the rapists, the murderers, the pedophiles? And I, we got to build a hey, courthouse. Hey, why are you calling us all those things? So I'm some not of us were just guys. stealing a loaf of bread. Oh, all right, you know all right. Saying? All right, well, the bread guy. Either the bread, way. The bread, that's a good point. We have a lot. We have a few movies about how bad it was for First Nations people. Ah, uh, yeah. Because that was no picnic. A lot of you white know. guilt over here. A lot of white guilt. I thought that was our thing. No, we have a different kind of white guilt. We're still killing ours. You guys are way better than us. That's true. It's interesting, isn't it, that I feel like what's happened in the States uh, just from while I was living there is that the tragedy of slavery has completely eclipsed oh. the genocide of the First Nations people. Totally. Right? Because it's like, and also there are so many more black Americans than right. there are First Nations Americans, so needless to say, it becomes, that is the social justice, yes. racial issue. Everybody's got to have a thing now. Yeah. you got to have a thing where you're feeling bad. So what we should have done here in Australia is had slaves, ah. and that way we wouldn't need to have the reckoning with First Nations. You're missing out. They're, they're well, very uh, helpful. They... <laughs> I mean, they're very efficient people. I, they don't have to pay them. I'm not they're... condoning slavery. I'm just right. saying, if they're... you lived in that time, you got lucky. They are affordable. Not if you're black. No, that's right. Very uh, affordable. Louis has a bit about how... Oh, have yeah. you seen that? Have I'm, you seen his latest? I love that bit. He basically says... he Because he, I saw him here, and he was saying, to people who haven't seen it, the only reason why you don't have slaves is because you can't. Right. 
yes. have them. But if you could have them, you would. You absolutely. I mean, you don't worry about buying the cheap clothes right. from people who Sweatshop. are in horrible yeah conditions. Exactly, iPhone, yeah. Nikes, but. Also, there was black black people had slaves too. That's right. Is kind of fucks up people's heads, but it's just hey, it's true. It's like when people say "fuck the police," you're like, also the black police, yeah. they're no good too. <laughs> like, there's nuance. People hate nuance. The black police are part of a structural white supremacist <laughs> system. Uh, <laughs> yes, you're right. You're that's, right. They're, so they're not really black. Yeah, yeah. They're capital W white. And it's okay to feel bad about things. Obviously, the native, whatever, you, the aboriginals and all that, mm. it's, you can feel bad, but... I think you'll get canceled just for calling them that. Oh, is that wrong? Probably. <laughs> okay, sorry, the... Uh... The brown spear folk. What are you? What are we going? <laughs> yeah, with? that's okay. what they. That's what they. They call themselves. <laughs> exactly. Hey, uh, I didn't do it. No. But neither did you. I didn't do anything. I'm just sitting here having a lovely conversation with totally. a wonderful comic. Uh, oh, thank you. Let's talk about our country again. Uh, you know, I, I can't love get it. enough of foreigners telling me how great my place is. I love it, and you know, New York can really fuck you in the ass. So it's nice. This is this is clean. I feel safe. It's pretty. There's a ton to do. You got the beach. Bondi's fifty. 15 minutes. Beautiful. Mm. It's mm. incredible. And this is winter. And it's winter here. Insane. This is winter. The crowds are good. They're smarter than my crowds. Is that right? They're catching all the subtleties. Really? They're not even American and they're catching them. Yeah. I wonder if that's because they're more online. And they, yeah. do they know do they know stuff about American? Oh yeah, you culture? guys get every reference. Huh. I'm saying degrees wrong and, and pounds <laughs> and, and you guys are kilograms <laughs> and anal and all this stuff. So uh, and anal? Sorry, I threw something else in. That was not. Yeah, that's not. What do you we guys don't call anal. Well, we do that the same way, don't we? I don't. I think you guys do it from the other angle. I think it's the same. Oh, okay. Different hemisphere. Di- same hem- Same people. Same Homo sapiens. If you cut me, do I not bleed? I don't know anything if about homos. You... <laughs> but I noticed the water, you know, the, the Simpsons episode, yes. the water goes the other way. Yes. And we all want to see that. That's but right. now your your toilet's just flushed down. It's not a thing. Okay. The Coriolis effect, <laughs> That's if it. you want to know about it, yes. uh, is something that would happen if you had a perfectly uh, balanced bucket. Uh-huh. And it was hanging from a rope from a tree, a perfectly stable tree. And there was no wind. And you put a hole in the bottom of the bucket. And you had a perfect, uh, like, uh, funnel mm-hmm. underneath it. And there was nothing. There was no dirt. And it had been perfectly, like, uh, steel wool. You sure. know, you were shining that thing up. So it yeah. was as buff as a baby's bottom. And then the then if, then if you put it in, maybe you'd get the Coriolis effect going one way versus the other. But there's too many other variables in a toilet. That's a lot That's of why The Simpsons was lying. Yeah. Well, we bought it. That episode. I know even you guys like that episode. I didn't care for it. Ah, shit. Knifey Spoony. I thought, like, uh, there are so many truly funny things about Australia. Right. It's a bit, I understood the perspective of the minority who's like, you know, like the Apu kind of argument of like, there's actually a lot you could tease us about as Indian Americans. Do you have to go for the cheapest Ah, Shot, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I only say it because eighteen Australians have, have brought it up to me how right. much they loved it. So <laughs> okay. I haven't seen it in twenty years. But. No, I'm the uh, like, so the yeah. The, I mean, it was basically like Bart was sort of like saying, "Don't sit on, don't tread on me" or something. Yeah. And the Aussies wanted to put a boot up his ass. Or yeah, I don't know. Hey, it's your town. You're the one who's defending the damn episode, Mark. <laughs> Stand but, by your opinions. You know what else is adorable man. about Australia What's is. That? You'll be like, watch out, this neighborhood's very ethnic, and I'll go, and it's Italian. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, ethnic. I thought you were going to talk about, you know, crazy races I've never heard of, and it's just some fucking WAP. Yeah. I don't think we call them that either. Oh. I think that's probably up there with, uh, what did you call uh, First Nations people? Brown spear people or yes, something. Yes, yes. I think that's... We we would we would probably kick you out of the country if you keep on. That's a didgeridoo. Don't. It's a. D- <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll see myself. That's out. the kind of humor we can expect <laughs> from your live. I'm no Arch Barker. Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of Arch Barker? I get it. I mean, I think he's a funny guy. I watched his Comedy Central special when I was like 13, and I thought it was great. Right. And I think he came here and he fell in love, and he just moved in. That's right. But also the other thing about being in like a medium-sized or small market is you got no competition. Ah, that too. You know what I mean? Good so point. like you're the guy with the American accent. You're the guy who seems like he's not that different from right. Jerry Seinfeld. Right. They both talk with the same accent. Yeah. 
and then you get to be the, the big fish in a small in a small pond. Right, and you're exotic because you're the foreign guy yeah. all of a sudden. So I, I, I'm sure he's getting tons of Australian gash. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Does it tempt you, maybe? No, maybe I'm married. Maybe you could become Arj Barker part two. No, I mean to stay, you just stay here. I would do a month out of the year. It's so beautiful. I love I'm it. I'm not offering a month. I'm offering oh. 12 months per year. I, I, and you can't much. leave. Too much. I like too to much. jump around. I could do this whole country in three months. So New York's a great place, I think, to be when you're in your 20s. Agreed. Then, uh, as I said, when I got old, I was like, well, I don't want to have, when I was there, having kids and stuff. And, uh, you know, we, we were like, we don't, I don't think I want to be uh, with a stroller Mm-mm. on icy steps going down into the subway with yeah. that hobo masturbating that you were talking exactly. about. Exactly. So how long have you got left in New York? Well, I just bought a house in Brooklyn. Brooklyn gives you a little more space, you know. So that's my weird little compromise of... I'm still in New York, but I'm out kind of in the burbs a little with a backyard and all that. So that that's my move. Sorry, I'm just drinking some delicious Sydney tap water. Great it, tap water. From, very good. Better than uh, Adelaide. War, <laughs> from Warragamba Dam. Huh? Warragamba. Man, the words here. It's so the good. Words. We're in Woolloomooloo. There you go. That's great. You were wa- telling me you were walking around to Barangaroo. Barangaroo. Yeah, it sounds like Ragmarok. And I feel like I'm in... Uh, uh, Fraggle. Well, what about Thor Ragnarok? That's what I'm saying. The Thor movie. It feels like wasn't that directed by a New Zealander? Takiki. Taiki. Ta- Wa- 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 Tiki. Tiki. There you go. Great it's... friend of mine. We're I... very close. <laughs> I think that's a town in Auckland. <laughs> that's right. Are you going to New Zealand this I time? I am. Oh, great. You it's haven't been three yet? days. Never been. I'm excited. It's a, it's a little more native over there, right? Why? What is with this r- incessant racism? I don't. I'm asking. I don't even. How can I be racist? I don't know. What, what do you mean by native? There I'm are more saying, Maori than there are Indigenous Australians. There what? There are more Maori. That's their uh, native population oh. than there are Indigenous Australians. Was that what you were alluding to? Well, how can when you say native, it's not racist. But yeah. I say it is. <laughs> we love to just call <laughs> things racist. Weren't you now. doing? Ha- you were doing some kind of like uh, almost uh, this Al Jolson. Of... <laughs> oh, I thought you were doing. No, like... no, I wasn't doing blackface. Okay, right. Or minstrel. No, no. Uh, I I met an Auckland comedian, and he had all these tattoos, and he said, "I'm part Waiki or something." And I was like, oh, okay. And he was telling me about it. He's like, all these tattoos. This is my father. This is my tribe. This right. is my house. I was like, oh, this is is this normal? He's like, oh, yeah, all my family has this. So I just assumed it was more down, you know, uh, I don't want to say primitive, but, you know, uh, old school. More deeply connected to their That's traditions. That's the way to say is it. Is what you were looking for. Perfect. Do you find it difficult navigating the conversational landscape at the moment with the sensitivities and whatnot? You don't seem bothered. Uh, no, things. I think the, it's all, I'm a big context guy, you know, and uh, it's like you see a guy getting stabbed in a movie, you know it's a movie. I feel like it's similar if you're trying to make a joke, but I also won't go blatant. I'm not I'm not pulling a Kramer here at the Laugh Factory. <laughs> right. You know? Right. And I'm just trying to learn. And I think I grew up in a black neighborhood and went to a predominantly black school, and we would say horrific jokes to each other, and we all got along, and now you really can't make the jokes. I feel like we're more tense than ever. So I think the jokes could connect us. Yeah. That doesn't seem to be the way that it's going, though, does it? No, but I still do it. <laughs> I got a, a diverse audience, too, which is nice. So to me, the proof's in the uh, in the pudding. Yeah, you know what? Uh, just this week, I did a segment with a linguist uh-huh. about the phrases that we say wrong that, aren't, that, we, that we don't realize are wrong. Oh, really? And one thing that came up from a bunch of callers, because I have talkback callers on my radio show, was... That we say the proof is in the pudding, uh-huh. but actually the phrase is the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Whoa! Oh, I love stuff like that. It just changes over time. That's Isn't right. That it's the proof of the. Pu- and then people were saying, "What were some other ones?" Like uh, uh, for all intensive purposes. Yes, that's of a big all one. Intents and purposes. Maybe yeah. you could do a whole routine about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that. Give that one to Jerry. <laughs> did you do a? Did you open for Jerry Seinfeld? A couple times. Yeah, we still keep in touch. Really? Yeah, we had lunch uh, about a month ago. Is that right? Yeah, very exciting. Just the fact that I know him is crazy. Where do you go to lunch with Jerry Seinfeld? He had a restaurant. He picked it out. I walked in. I said, "I'm here to." They go, "Oh, we know, right here." Uh-huh. And uh, why were they speaking like that? I think they were doing a Robin Williams impression. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we had lunch. It was. Five minutes of weirdness, and then we really got cooking. It was great. He's wow. a really normal guy. What was the restaurant? 
It was a uh, called Brooklyn Diner. Right. In was New it York. in Brooklyn? It wasn't. That was the weird thing. That's funny, isn't Very it? Very confusing. Where does he live? The Upper West Side? Yep. Of course he does. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, can I just say, God be with ye, what? goodbye. What does that mean? Goodbye was God be with ye. And it that just over right. time got turned into goodbye. God be with ye. Yeah, you're talking about the proof yeah, of the pudding. Yeah, sure. That's goodbye. another one for you. Well, you know, uh, here we say g'day as well. Right. I don't know if you've heard that. G'day. G'day. It means a good day. Yeah. The it, God is in the, the day. Right. The God oh. is good today. Yeah, I'll take that. You All can right. take that. So yeah, you it, sit down with Jerry Seinfeld. What does he order? He got. We got breakfast. He got some healthy thing. I got two pancakes. Of course and a, did. And a huevos rancheros. Well, he he's got, paying. You got that right. Yeah. I told him I'd tip, and uh, <laughs> he, he giggled. <laughs> How did that relationship come about? Crazy story. I uh, did a Tonight Show, which, you know, Tonight Show is kind of dead. You, they yeah. used to make your career. Now yeah. no one sees it. Gets well, started. whose Tonight Show was it? Because it's been a revolving cast for the past 10 years. Also was it? true. Jimmy Fallon. It was Fallon. Yeah. And it went well, and nobody sees it. It doesn't move the needle at all. But he happened to see it. Wow. Randomly in his gigantic t- castle on the yeah. Upper West Side. And I bumped into him about a week later, randomly. You know, he jumps around the city, and I was doing a gig. And he goes, oh, hey, I'm a fan. And I was like, wow. Then I had a, I went on in front of him and had a good set. And then he goes, let's talk. And we hung out in the green room. What club is this? This is called uh, Gotham Comedy Club yep. on 23rd Street. Yeah. And we hang out in the green room for like an hour. And it, it went so well that he was like, take my number. And I was like, I, I, I feel I couldn't weird. possibly. Yeah. And he was like, hey, use it. Use it. And I was like, all right. So I got his number and I skipped around Manhattan for about four hours. Wow. Had best, one of the best comedy moments of my life. Incredible, isn't it? And then six months later, he's, I woke up hungover in a comedy condo in North Carolina, some shit gig. And I, I'm like, hello? And he's like, hey, it's Jerry. You want to open for me at the Beacon? And I was like, ah, shit. sure. Shit. Good but times. you knew he was calling because you must have saved his number. It's not like you didn't put his number in your phone. It was a different, it was it may have been his landline or he something. Was calling, and then you quickly saved that. Add to contact. You better believe it. Jerry Castle, in yes. parentheses. <laughs> right, right. Non-cell. And I drunk texted him once and never again. Don't do that. Yeah. Was, Don't do that. My dick looked great, though. I had to send it. <laughs> Gotham is where I first met Mike Kaplan. Do you oh, know Mike? I love Mike. Old friend. Good old Mike. He was just on the show as well. I saw your clip on YouTube. Is that right? It's still up there. There you go. Your that hair must was have been darker. Probably when he was on the show previously, maybe. Huh? He's been on the show more than once. Oh, Mike! It was me and Mike on YouTube. On oh, you it saw it was just you. It was, it was just, just me doing stand up at yeah. Gotham. That's it's right. on YouTube. That's a long fucking time ago, man. That's when I first moved to New York. Yeah, yeah. I would that would have been two thousand five. It went well, did it? Yeah. What was I talking about? I got halfway through. <laughs> I didn't care for it. Uh, <laughs> uh, that would have been uh, that would have been interesting anyway. Yeah, back in the early days of uh, television presenting, it's always good. Right. I feel to to kind of hone your chops a little bit with a live audience. Even I if know it's not your thing. It feels so antiquated now. That feels like a whole other thing. How did you prepare for your Tonight Show set? I uh, I you have to get a set approved by the booker, and then once you get it approved, I just run around the city and just do it over and over and over. Mm. That's right. Five so, minutes. And how do you decide what the set that you're going to put to them is? Well, you got to go clean, so that cuts out a lot of queef stuff. <laughs> and then uh, you you try to go pretty accessible. You know, some jokes have weird references. Uh, right. Sorry, right? We'll, we'll see, man. <laughs> and uh, so you go clean, and then you try to go very mainstream material, like right? Relationship, family, you know, whatever, eating. Because uh, in Omaha, they need to get it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So then you, I like to try to end with a nice banger with a callback. So you got to put that together, and here we are. Fantastic. And I guess part of uh, part of your ri- your stratospheric rise was going on Joe Rogan's show as well. That helped, and that was back when Rogan was Rogan, like when you did. Right. It. Yeah, back when he was. <laughs> you think he was bigger? I think it was more. Uh, the YouTube was a little more accessible. Yeah, that's interesting. You mean pre Spotify? Yes, I did. Yeah, that's right. So I. No, I was post Spotify. I done the show seven times. Hey, I can't remember all. You of went them. viral on that one because you guys had the uh, the debate about abortion or vaccine. They're both. Both. 
We did abortion in about 2018, and we did vaccines in about 2022. Man, you've done your research, or you're just making up controversial subjects. Well, Brad, which is also our, our mutual uh, pal, he said, you want to do this guy's pod? And right. I usually would go, what are you kidding? I'm going to go drinking and fuck my wife. But I'm, I was like, let me look this guy up, and <laughs> right. I, I, was, I was into it. That's interesting, isn't it? Well, I appreciate you yeah. being here. It's fantastic. Let's talk more about how great Sydney is. I mean, yes. the weather, am I right, people? <laughs> the no. weather's not ideal today, but yesterday was... I'm kidding. Beauty. I'm kidding. Uh, I want to talk about Lex Friedman because uh, sure. he's a fellow podcaster, a yep. lovely guy. You've done his show. Cute little autistic twink robot. He's... <laughs> Adorable. The suit, hair, perfect hairline, <laughs> zero emotion. Yeah. Great so, guy. So what's going on with uh Well with he's Lex? AI. He I think. is he? I think he's Chat G B. Yeah, I think it's GPT. P T. But you can be G B as well. Chat G B. G P T. G P T. Got it. That's what the kids are talking about these days. They're it's all on about their AI. And very you're saying useful. now you're telling me that Mr. Friedman is not just an AI researcher but may actually be AI. So he loves robotics. One of the, the ways in which I, uh, you know, do a lot of research before I interview my guests, which I generally don't do much research at all, sure. would be to listen to them on other podcasts to see if they're any good. Yeah. So then you, when you come up, I'm like, oh, well, he's been on Lex. Let's take a, a listen to a little bit of Lex. Not my best uh, performance. I, don't I think, think you were great. Oh, thanks. But I got to say, I'm a little mystified by the whole Friedman. Phenom. <laughs> because as you say, and I with the greatest of respect to my fellow podcaster, sure. The robot thing is a little bit it comes on strong oh, yeah. with Mr. Friedman. Oh yeah. I, I want you to put on those hef- headphones and you just listen it. to this. Because when I was listening to this, I was like, this is an amazing thing to to hear. Here you are on Lex Friedman's show. Listen to this. Are okay. you married? No. Single. Virgin? Uh, of course, yeah. I can't uh, imagine. I bet you'd be great in bed. You're ripped. You got the best hairline in podcasting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't tried yet, so we'll have to see. All right, well, let me know. Pretty big hog on you? <laughs> I'm just trying to get a rise out of him. Crazy, crazy tool downtown. Mm-hmm. That matters to girls? Nothing. Apparently. Nothing. Yeah, Deflecting. <laughs> okay, New Orleans. You grew up in New Orleans? Yeah, born and raised. Treme, outside the French Quarter. You ever been? Yeah. Don't remember it. Nothing. Who's interviewing who? <laughs> I mean, I can't tell if you have fun. No, not really. But Rush, I mean, Russian, of course, I drink vodka, all, right. all that kind of thing. Okay, here we go. There's something. Something. Vodka. Beer was just labeled an alcoholic beverage in 2011. Fun fact. What do you mean? In Russia. <laughs> it was, was just it? fall against the curtain. It's... It finally got declared legally as an alcoholic beverage. Which means you can regulate it, that kind of thing. I guess so. Yeah. See, that's where your brain goes. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just go, oh, these fucking Ruskies. I didn't are... even know there's rules about drinking. <laughs> this is good. I'm learning about Russia from you. So, um, what's the difficult memory experience from childhood? Mm. No, so, no transition. No, I mean, what is happening here? I'm listening to this going, so people, uh, millions of people, yeah. listen to this guy just sitting there. And Mark is striking. Oh, you can take the headphones oh, off okay. if you want. You're batting. You're going Trying. in. You got the. He's got a big dick. Yeah. You can bring in the the beer. Yeah. Russian yeah. anecdote to the table. Yeah. Virgin. And he's like, uh, he's got a, a a list of, I guess, a set of questions. Yeah. Does he have a set of questions? He in did. Front of yeah. Him? He did his homework. And then he re goes. Then he he just he, he hears human talk, <laughs> and then. Leaves awkward pause and then proceeds to next question on list. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is fine, but how do you get millions of listeners? I have a theory. I, first of all, I want to say he's a he's a good guy. Love the guy. Okay, I mean, I, if I anyone like can, pod. how does he achieve this well, level of? What do I need to be doing, Mark? Well, here's the thing: is one, I think he's super genuine. Like he cannot fake a obviously he can't fake emotion, but really? I think. It comes off. He's really interested. Not with me. I'm an idiot. <laughs> but he's really interested, and I think that comes through. The same with Rogan. Love him or hate him. He's actually like, what aliens? Native Americans? Get yeah, out of here. Yeah, but Rogan has. Ne- Rogan is so on. Yes. I mean, yes. he is listening. And oh, if you yeah. give us something, to, something to Joe, he's coming right back at you. The man is like, he's switch. He's not sitting there like a robot, just going, must proceed to next. 
question well, on list. Now, this is my theory, and you're going to hate it. I'm going to hate it. But I think we have a real need now. We're very emotion-based, I think, and victim stuff and all that. And I think Sam Harris, Lex Friedman, Huberman, the, the list goes on of these purely uh, autistic robotic, emotionless <laughs> men who just spout information. Right. I think people are craving that so much. So he'll have a physicist on, a scientist on, a... a, a a robotics designer on, and I think people just like, ah, black and white, A to B, one plus one is two. Right. And I think that's what's going on with Lex. Certainty. Yes. In a chaotic world. That's a better way to put it. I like it. So I, like I think that that's idea. his appeal, and I think he came in at the right time. That that 20 years ago, that Lex, that would, that would be thrown in the garbage. It's extraordinary. I mean, it's amazing that people, because like this profession, uh, my profession, if you can call it that, is about having conversations, right? Yes. I mean, it's about having an ability to listen to people and then follow, and then sniff out what's interesting and follow them down rabbit holes that you might not have expected. I don't do a lot of prep. I just you know listen to what you're talking about. And yeah. If you want to talk about hobos jerking me off on the New York City subway, then that's where the conversation goes. Sure. But it, it, so it, I'm always fascinated by conversations that really aren't conversations. Yeah. That people still want to listen to, but that are just a, a person talking. I think that's popular. I think the Jimmy Fallons of the world, they go, what do you create? You got a gray sweater? Ah, that's amazing. I love gray. And you're, we're all going, what are we laughing at? What right. is this? And I think people just want information, black and white, you know. But to me, those are both flip sides of the same coin of not listening. That's a good those point. Those are not opposites that's to me. That's a good point. Fallon is the, uh, well, I mean, uh, while we're shitting on uh, people, why don't we just <laughs> shit on people, right? Uh, you know, I think Fallon is the worst of the of the late night hosts. Uh, uh, um, just because I find him facile and glib and giggly right. and mildly irritating. I right. loved Letterman. Letterman was my hero. I, I thought Letterman. Dave was the... The gold standard of that kind of misanthropic, incredibly intelligent, Agreed. smart, like, you know, always snarky, trying to find sarcastic. a way to, yeah, be snarky and sarcastic. I never liked Jay. I didn't like the, the you know, I, I get along with everybody shtick. I right. liked Conan. I yeah. like Seth. I mean, uh, but, you know, I think not listening and just spouting your robot question and not listening and giggling over the top of people and pretending to find their sweater uproarious are mm. both flip sides of the same. I think I think you got yeah. something there, but I think that flip side that he's doing is in right now. Yeah, whereas right. Johnny Carson was in for forty years. Right, you know those days are over. So yeah. it is a flip side and an extreme, but that extreme happens to be working right now, mm. which we I don't think it will forever. Interesting. Well, where does like the Jordan Peterson emotive male? fit into that. I think that kind of ran its course as well. I think people still love him. I'm not a huge guy because I already can make my bed and get dressed. <laughs> but like... <laughs> you don't need him giving you that advice. No, but I think there are people who do and I think I've heard uh, Brad, our, our promoter guy, yeah. he's, had, he's toured with him many times yeah. and he's like, good guy, sweet guy and the people that come out are like, thank you, you changed my life, I was depressed yeah. and you saved me. So... God bless that's those people who need the help and get it. Deepak Chopra for young white males. Yes, he's the male instead Oprah. Instead of middle-aged, yeah, women. Exactly. Uh, and if people are wondering about Brad, he's the promoter. He, he, oh, yeah. he works for the, for the tour, touring company that brought you out, and that uh, and he's a great guy, and they do some, some work with me as well. Would you be a, a talk show host? No. Does that appeal to you? I, I, it appeals to me, but I would I would hate it. Why? Because hey, you got to talk to people you don't care about. You got to fake it. You got to be on. It's a job. Right. You know? And if it's not going well, you can't just go, well, this is this sucks. You know, you have to go, ha, ha, well, we'll go to commercial. And I can't live like that. Yeah. I would kill myself. Right. Oh, J, J- Lo is here today. And you want to be like, J Lo, how do you, that ass? Is it is it hard to walk around with? But they'd go, <laughs> whoa, what do you, you can't ask her that? I'm like, oh, well, then I don't care about her movie. <laughs> You know, so it wouldn't work. <laughs> well, then I wonder if, because uh, you could, I mean, if you reach a certain level of success as a talk show host, you can decide who you don't want to talk to. I mean, unless oh, is that they're right? well, surely, unless I mean, unless they're very, very, very top, you can't say no to Clooney, but, sure, or Tom Cruise, but you could say no to. Well, that's why I like Howard Stern because I feel like he's gotten weird lately. But I think the those original interviews were really some of the best because he asked the questions you actually gave a shit about. Yeah. What happened? 
Well, I think he uh, he was so far the crazy guy, the misogyny sex guy, that I think he swung the other way, and now he's super far the other way. And he's like, hey, you shouldn't talk like this. And, that. and you're like, I get it. You have morals now, and you've evolved, but the show is better the other way. Right. I don't, I mean, because I'm here in Australia, I, don't, I no longer hear him, uh, but is he woke? I, yeah, I guess that's the term, and like he was on America's Got Talent as a host, so he's just lost all of his edge, and uh, still a great interviewer, but I think now he's like, hey, you shouldn't do that, and this and that, and you're like, we have so much video of you in blackface, <laughs> and slapping uh, retarded homeless people's asses. I, I don't know if you have the uh, moral authority here. Can't people change? Sure, sure, but they're funnier one way. Right. You know, and he's an entertainer. So is it the hypocrisy that gets you, or is it the, I don't the fact the, that he's not funny? It's probably the more that he's not funny and the uh, who are you really. Right. I guess you can change, but I'm like, could you just change right back? Then do right. I have to adjust to that? I, I like a guy or a gal who's is pretty this, So consistent. is that is that a generic – I mean, do you think that's a generic legitimate criticism of social justice, that there's something inauthentic about it? Um, maybe because it, it just happens to be in. And so you just happen to be completely on board with the thing that's in. If it goes out, will you not be in? Right. You know, I, I have horrible clothing because I don't know anything about fashion. And I feel like a lot of social justice is kind of fashion-y. It comes mm. in, it comes out, and people just go where the wind's blowing. Yeah. It's interesting when people say like, oh, well, I don't know whether or not if I'd lived in, you know, the 50s, whether or not I would have, uh, you know, been sexist or if I had lived in the time of slavery, whether or not I would have had slaves to go back to the, the Louis gag. Sure. I always say, if you currently believe the things that there are only good social incentives for believing, like social justice issues, then we know that you would have been sexist and we know you right. would have had slaves because right. we know that your personality type is not to upset the apple cart great point right well said you would need in order for me to believe that you wouldn't have had slaves you would now have to be doing things that are wildly audacious that the rest of us go what the fuck are you on about this yeah. is, you're, you're so mo much more moral than the rest like exactly. you'd have to be an ultra vegan like if you're a super super vegan or something yes or if you're Greta Thunberg, like sailing across the Atlantic in a homemade boat because of climate yes. change or something, then maybe I'll believe that back in the 1800s or 1700s you wouldn't have had slaves. Yeah, you're putting your you money just, where your mouth is. Yeah, if you happen to believe all the correct, like you exactly. know, anti-racist things that it's good, that it's convenient to believe right now, of course right. you would have had slaves because you're a conformist. And this is going to sound crazy, but that's kind of why I throw some of these horrific words out there because smart people get what I'm doing so I can kind of just slough off all the idiots. You know, they're like, hey, you're not supposed to say that. I'm like, oh, what article did you read where you, you learned that I'm not supposed to say that? Mm. And I know I'm not supposed to say that. That's kind of why I'm saying it. So you sheepy people can just go on your way. Do you worry about that coming back to bite you in the ass? All the time. But, I, you know, we're all going to die one day. <laughs> And I'm not a bad guy, so I'm just like, yeah, it's a word. I said a word. I, I don't hate people. Since when does not being a bad guy save you? That's a good point. That's a good point. Outrage archaeology, I call it, you know, where they go back and they, they hunt. Oh, yeah. You know, they hunt for something. What was it, Kevin? What's his face? Who didn't get the Academy Award because uh, he was going to host the the Oscars. Kevin that uh, funny, Hart. Yeah, Kevin Hart. And then they found he said something homophobic in, like, 2009 on Twitter. <laughs> I know, oh, I man, know. It's like, well, you're just doing archaeology here. It wasn't that offensive at the time. Yeah, you can't take it up to now. It's like mm. saying, hey, milk costs 10 cents. No, no, it used to cost 10 cents. Now it's four ninety nine. You right. know, it's a, things change. Yeah. So you can't judge it by the old way. But I think, too, it's weird that that's, they're the good guys. Hey, Kevin Hart said a homophobic thing, and let's ruin his life and take opportunities away. And you're like, you're the good one? Yeah. To me, how about going, hey, you shouldn't have said that. And he goes, you're right. It's a different time. I'm sorry. That's a way more productive uh, movement to me. It's funny, isn't it? Council culture. Council. Not cancel. Council I heard that on a, on a NPR show. That sounds bullshit. Doesn't <laughs> council culture. I know, culture. but this gotcha, we have to get you and... Like, your debates with Rogan, you guys are having a debate. You would disagree with him. You're mm. not like, you should be 
put in jail. No. You know, and that's, to me, that's where we should go, and that's the liberal way. Let's be more liberal. That's very illiberal to just tear people down and then hurt their livelihood and, and smear their name. That's not good. What's funny also is that the same people who do that are the likeliest to be in favor of criminal justice reform and giving people yes! a second chance. Another right? great one. So if you murder if you murder someone, then You're twenty years go. later they'll be like, you know what? Everyone can have everyone can turn over a new leaf. He's been rehabilitated. Abolish the prisons. Yes. Fuck the police and uh, let them out. You know, right. everyone <laughs> right. everyone has a reason for doing what they're doing. Forgive. Yeah. And then someone, you know, 11 years ago, used the F word in a tweet. Yes. And they're like, fuck him forever, man. I know, forever. And then it's weird because I'm going to try to get this out. You, I'm good at saying it, and then you can articulate it <laughs> better. I'll be like the Mark speaker, like a, you know, a horse whisperer or something. Yes. I'll be the Mark whisperer. There you go. There you go. So, like, okay, if you call a trans person a... What's the, the T word? The, the, the T word. With the we Y just, at the end. We can sit with the T okay. word. I think people know what we're talking about. All right. Let's say Dave Chappelle makes a trans joke and then like, people take stuff away from him. And they, they He's got a movie coming out and he gets pulled out of the movie. And he's like, what the hell? And they're like, you have to be more sensitive. You have to be compassionate to these people. But then they go, and he's rich anyway, so who cares about his feelings? And you're like, well, that's kind of weird. You can't discriminate people's feelings based on how much money they have. But let's say you call Dave Chappelle the N-word. Is is that is he okay right. because he's rich? Right. You see what I'm saying? I, I know do. I said that horribly. Yeah. If the feelings matter when you care about the group, but when it's another guy you don't like, the feelings don't matter. Right. I need some consistency. I know what you're saying. I don't even need to translate that. I think that was perfect. Maybe you could translate because I don't know if I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I said it. I think you might be talking also about this related phenomenon of punching down. Yeah, that's a big term now. You know, they say you can punch you can punch up, yes. but you can't punch down. But who's who says what's up? Well, who what's up and what's down? This is what I'm saying. Exactly. So, like, if I were to call Dave Chappelle the N-word, am I punching up because he's incredibly wealthy and successful? Ah. Or am I punching down because I am a white, a white. supremacist? <laughs> <laughs> that clip. <laughs> There's the clip, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. That's you a good question. It, and also, I think if I call Lizzo fat, right. I'm an asshole. Right. But if, you, if someone calls you racist, which is worse than being fat, yeah. they're a hero. And you're not racist, I assume. I assume you're not racist. Only mildly. Well, who isn't? But they call you, and they have this weird out because they're calling you a thing that's bad. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but she's actually fat, objectively. Right. And you're maybe racist, but you will lose your job. For the record, I'm not. For the record, you're not. Racist or fat. But it's a genius play because you can't. You, first of all, you can't prove you're not. No. You could go, well, I have a black wife. And they go, yeah, but it's internalized and right. systematic and your ancestry. Right. And you're like, uh, so you just, you, you, you pulled all these, these mm. bullshit cards out of a hat. Bill Burr. Bill Burr. They say Bill Burr's racist. All the time. He's banging a black woman. I know. He's got black kids. Yeah. Or half black. Yeah. <laughs> Sounded like uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Half black. Half black. But yeah, so... It's all very uh, picky and choosy and convenient, you know, these, these chess piece moves. Yeah. But I'd rather be fat than racist. I'd rather be fat than racist. Yeah. I'd rather be what I am, which is a, an ideal weight non-racist. Hey, How about that's that? good. Can we be that? That's Can good. we be a non-racist? But you can't be a non-racist, they say. Yeah. You have to be an anti-racist. <laughs> You know what I mean? Which yeah. is a whole host of uh, ideologies around diversity, equity, and inclusion right. that are not actually the principles of Martin Luther King Jr. or Gandhi yes, or yes. whatever. They're this new kind of, like, as you said, very self-conscious kind of attitude towards identity yeah. right. where we're all like, it's not about ignoring the, the differences. It's about exacerbating and exaggerating the differences and feeling very, feeling very keenly yes. what tribe we're a part of. Yeah, I hate the tribe stuff. Can't I be a little this, a little that? No, like You can be fluid in gender so much, but you can't be fluid in uh, ideology or politics. Let alone race. Yeah. Yeah, you can be half black, half white. Yeah. That's fluid. That's fluid. You can be half black, third Asian, and a third uh, Irish. That's very fluid. It is interesting, isn't it? The, here's, a, here's another one I want to yeah, throw at please. you. please. Trans is, I feel like, the hot button right now. Yeah. So they say trans women are women. 
Yeah. Okay, that's a big thing. Trans women are women. That's why the sports thing is allowed, because the people go, well, they're women. They can play on the women's team. Right. But if I make an anti-trans joke, people go, that's transphobic. But it shouldn't it be misogynist? If they're women, right. shouldn't it also be misogynist? But it's just transphobic? But I thought they were the same, so why is it just transphobic? Well, I would probably say it's both. Okay. They would give you that. All right, all right. If there was an opportunity for them to damn you as two bad things instead of one, I suspect the social justice warriors would would take it up. Take that. I'd be like he's a sexist and also a transphobe. Okay. You can have. You can be both. I think that's fine. All right, all right. Be as many different uh, metrics of bigot as you want to be. So if if white men are trash or scum or whatever it is, Mm. toxic, Mm. does that mean Elliot Page is toxic? Ooh, that's what I'm getting at. It feels like we say there's no difference, but then there's there's weird differences. Right. That's all. And I'm not saying there is or there isn't a difference. I'm just saying I want some consistency. Is Elliot Page a toxic male? According to your logic out there, mm. it, he is. That's interesting. That's fun stuff, isn't it? And that's why comedy is so exciting. And the, so just on the trans thing and the race thing, right, the, it is interesting to me that – and maybe this will change in 10, 20 years. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, like race is basically a fiction, right? I mean the way that we think about race – like it's not the, – the Nationality the, is objective, uh, you could say. Yeah, you could say nationality is objective. Races. You could say ethnic groupings are, are are real. And sure, I mean we can we 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 sociologically and culturally we make up racial distinctions, right? I mean yes. a, a generation or two ago, Italian Americans were not white. Yes. You know, and Greek Jews. Americans and Jews, not white, right? Now they're white, other people are black. We can you know, the, but the boundaries, That's the genetic differences between Races are negligible. Like mm. there's more variation between within races than there are between races. So it's like it's a very slippery and cultural concept. Yes, race. agreed. Sex is generally binary. Yeah. In most most species, yep. there's a male and a female that have particular biological characteristics. Except for the seahorse. Except for the seahorse. That's about it. That's the only trans animal. But of those two things, the one that we've chosen to regard as being slippery and undefinable and on a spectrum is the sex one. Yes. Not the race one. Agreed. I can't just choose to change. I can't say I feel deeply inside that I'm an African. That's that offensive. I'm a, a black African, so I want to. I think that'll change. That's what I'm wondering. So Rachel Dolezal, right. I think, will be the Rosa Parks of the. Really? I, in 10 years, I think so, because what's, what's the difference? And it goes back to what you said. Do you just go where the wind's blowing, or do you actually put your money where your mouth is? Right. So in 10 years, you're going to go, you called Rachel Dolezal a piece of shit? Now you're the bad guy. Maybe right. that'll all come up. Maybe. Yeah. And maybe everyone who piled on to Rachel Dolezal is going to be in prison. Now she's on OnlyFans, and I'm a member. <laughs> That's right. Is that true? Is she, on she, only... is, she is. She's on OnlyFans. Oh, you better believe it. Wow. Does she still think she's black? Oh, yeah. She does. Yeah. She's well, part of the NAACP. Is that right? And they have her. Yeah, the, in Seattle, which shows how white Seattle is. Right. <laughs> She's the blackest person yeah, in exactly. the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and just on the just to close the chapter on punching up and punching down, mm-hmm. the other thing I often think, which must be difficult to deal with as a comic, is uh, like if you're punching against the cultural orthodoxy, which everyone is supposed to believe, mm-hmm. which might be like a very worthy kind of wokey sort of social justice orthodoxy. And there are huge penalties to disagreeing with that orthodoxy and speaking the way we just have been about the oddities of this or that aspect of it. Then they'll accuse you of punching down because the orthodoxy presents itself as speaking on behalf of marginalized communities. Ah, right. But what you're actually doing is, I think, punching up into uh, an orthodoxy that has a dogma that is forcing everyone to say the same thing and believe Completely the same agree. thing. Completely that is agree. the power structure. Yes. Is the power structure at the moment that like white, sexist, racist males can get away with anything? 
where? I mean, who? <laughs> like, you know us. what I mean? Yeah. yeah, that's right. I don't say us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not sorry. sexist or racist. I'm just saying, like, who is the mythic, like, the mythical old white male dinosaur sexist who, like, the guy who in the office slaps a woman's ass and says, like, nice tits yeah. to it or something like that. Right. That person is not tolerated in no. polite society now. No way. The person who, you know, wears blackface to the office party and thinks it's hilarious. He's a public he's enemy out on his one. ear. Yeah. Yeah, so who's so who's the so attacking him isn't punching up surely, he's a powerless old loser. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's the villain. Yeah. So I, I agree. And this whole monolith of you're white to me, you're like you're white guys. So you're part of the problem. Like, well, you're doing what police do to black people. You're uh, what's the you fit the description profiling profiling. So now when you pull I'm over the mark a, whisperer again, y- thank you. You pull over a black guy and you go, well, you fit the description, you know, 6'1", black, male. And they're like, I didn't do anything. I just got off work. And you're like, that's what they're doing to Whitey. They're going, hey, well, you're a white man, cis, hetero. And you're like, I didn't do anything. I'm an idiot. But what about the claim that just by moving through the world as a white male, you have experiences that you don't even notice are privileged? Yeah, that like... When you walk into a store, there's less scrutiny on you as to I whether agree. or not you're going to shoplift something than if you were a woman of color or sure. whatever. Sure. I agree with that, and I do think white people have certain privileges, but I also think other races have privileges that we don't focus on. I think everyone has some privilege. Maybe white people have the most, but there's dirt. I'm way nicer to black people than I am to white people. Right. You know, and I, I'm... If a black woman gets mad at me, I'm like, whatever you need, take yeah, my right. take my wallet, take my my wife, please. But uh, <laughs> if a white guy's mean to me, I'm like, get the fuck. If I see a black guy on the train with music playing, I don't say anything. But if it's a white guy, I'll go, can you turn that down? Right. You know, and in a way, that's a privilege. But whatever. Uh, my point is, mm. I forgot my point. No, I like it. That's we all interesting. have some privilege. You all have some. Pri- well, if, having a, I think what you're saying is having a card. Oh. Yeah, I no, got it back. Please. Okay, Your so words, Asian people walk into a store, <laughs> okay. and I, they also, I think, are left alone. So is that their Asian privilege? And people go, well, they work hard. They don't steal. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's how these stereotypes right. go. So what you're saying is uh, black people are thieves I is think, what you I'm not saying black people are thieves, but right. I think there are black thieves. Yeah, but there are white thieves and Asian thieves. Sure, but why don't you, if they're white thieves and Asian thieves, why don't you get mad at them when they walk in the store? Because you're not racist against them. But why are you not? Why are you racist towards black people and not Asian? Well, now I think you're raising a sensitive issue, which is that like part of the problem is a class and poverty problem, uh-huh. which particularly in the United States is overlaid onto race. Yes, which so I think sh- is a whole different thing. Yeah, the shopkeeper is probably profiling unjustly people on the basis of an assumption about their class. Right, right. They think this person looks like a poor person who's likely to steal maybe. I think class is a is a better way to say it because a poor white guy comes into the store, I'm I'm worried he's exactly. going to steal. Exactly, that's but right. But he's white. Does yeah. that mean I hate white people? No, I'm just I, I'm scared of poor people. Yeah, I'm not. But <laughs> if I owned a shop, I used You're to be suspicious poor. Suspicious of poor people. Yeah, it's just weird. People say you hate people of color, and I'm like, so does that mean I hate Indians? Mm. Who hates Indians? Nobody hates Indians. They're the best. Pakistanis probably uh, hate Indians. Good point. The uh, Bigotry of small differences. Right, right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Arabs and Jews. Yes, yes. It's uh, it, Having a card to play is a certain type of privilege is what I was going to say. That's another what one. You were just saying. So, like, I am married to a guy. I get to play the gay card on everybody, right? The moment anybody talks about this, I can be like – and also, I'm half Jewish, so I get to be oh. like – I, I've got two. I've got two in my arsenal. I've got two quills in my quiver, yes. as you might say. And I'll be like, you know, when they talk, I can just say – your homophobia and anti-Semitism is shocking to me. If they disagree with me about anything, you know what I mean? And then and, you win. Yeah, and I win. It's yeah. like you were saying about, you know, the black person on the subway playing music loud. There was a story here where there was a uh, famous black rapper on a domestic flight here in Australia. Mm. And he posted on social media about how the the flight attendant was racist because she asked him to put away his uh, laptop computer and put his tray table <laughs> up when the flight was coming down and, she, and he felt like he was 
single, uh, singled out by right. her and that she was particularly brusque oh, or something. Hilarious. And I was like, you don't know how flight attendants, what their manner is in Australia. Yeah. You don't know whether or not we're more casual and less deferential than other cultures might be. Yeah. You don't know whether she was just not treading on eggshells the way that an American person in the service industry might be because they're more hyper aware and Completely. more sensitive in the way that you were. Maybe she what maybe she was actually treating you the way she treats everybody else. Of course. But you're used to an American Airlines flight attendant being more deferential because yes. she's more worried about the perception of racism. We don't know. Like I've been told I've been pissed off at flight attendants a lot for tell, for being bossy to me. Yeah. But the difference is you have the card in your pocket that you can pull out and go but on social. They also have to deal with racism. This Sometimes is also true. Real racism. So there is, I guess it's a 50-50, but I wonder, this is a crazy question, this might get me in trouble. I wonder if black people ever get annoyed when black people tell them to stop doing something because they just, they can't use the race card. You know, like oh. let's say the flight attendant was black. Wow. Now you can't call her racist because she's also black. So then what do you do? Now she's just a bitch? Or, or you hate her? Or she just doesn't like you as a person? So I wonder if they're like, oh good, she's white. I can, I can pull right. this. I would if I was black. I'd be like, oh, hell yeah. So what you're saying is you're racist. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how do we get to that? I'm saying if I was black, if I'd want were... more white people to yell at me than black people. That's right, said... because you'd be racist against white people and you'd be playing a race card. There you go. But maybe black people aren't doing that. But no. maybe one of them is. I think... How many would you need to be doing it for it to be a phenomenon? Yeah, that's a good question. 5%. But also, I think if we're looking constantly for racism, you're going to think it's happening more. If you're always – you ever heard that uh, – what's that old thing where they put a scar on a woman with makeup and they said, go do a job interview and we're going to see if people treat you differently because you have a scar. Oh. And the women go, okay, great. Big scar on the cheek. Then they go, all right, right before the cameras roll, let me just touch you up real quick. And they take the scar away. Right. But she doesn't know that. Right. Then they do, do the job interview and they go back and they go, were you mistreated? They go – I've never been treated so badly in my life. I was so fucked up. They were all mean to me. They were cutting and insensitive, and she had no scar. Wow. So it was all in the head. So all this victim, hey, your life's ruined. You got a target on your back. You're screwed. You're down here. The world hates you. This is a horrible message. Right. It's not good. Right. And people think they're doing good by going, hey, you poor kid. You got no chance. You're fucked. The cops want to kill you. Now the kid's like, well, I might as well yeah. break the law. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all fucked anyway. You know Jonathan Haidt, the oh, social love psychologist? Yeah, the coddling of the American mind that he, yes. uh, he co-wrote. And he, I mean, that's partly his point. That if you had to compile a series of behaviors or like things that you teach people uh, in order to encourage a lack of resilience, mm -hmm. then it would be exactly the kind of social justice woke ideas about people being victims, people being uh, crippled by, uh, you know, vulnerable uh, to words, yes. words being violence, right. uh, be constantly being under attack. Like these are not, these are things that, that create a pathological kind of insecurity rather Completely. than strengthening people. I agree. I agree. And we do this thing where we, we put, we put a bandaid on shit. Whereas if you let it get wounded and scar up and heal, it would actually be stronger. Right. You know, like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, but, uh, hold on, I had one. Damn it. Oh, shit. I, I'm so hungover. I can't think today. Sorry. You'll get it. But you, you keep I going. It'll, it'll come back. It'll All come right. Back well, now I think you. I lost it completely. All right, it'll come back. I believe in you. The but, Jew, on the Jew thing. Yeah, right? I love my, the Jews. My grandmother, um, you know, by having been hunted around Europe by them Nazis, not good people. Not no, good people, you no. Nazis. <laughs> uh, she, she, having come as a refugee to Australia... And a cute story about her, actually. She, uh, like, at the end of the war, she was in Europe, and she went to the place in France where there were the big ships going to the New World. Yeah. And uh, she was uh, an uneducated, you know, penniless uh, refugee. And the clerk who was there said, you can go to Canada or the United States or Australia. Mm. Which one do you want to go to? They're all taking refugees. And she said, which one's further away? Ooh. That's why I'm Australian, not Whoa. Canadian or American. Good for her. I mean, for this her. is paradise. She was like, "I'll get us, get me further, as far away from the from Europe as I can." Yeah. So anyway, I got it back. You go, go the, for the it. band aid thing. Yeah. During COVID, fat people kept dying. Overweight people. It was right. a real problem. But the news wouldn't say try to lose weight. Right. And but they say they they don't. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. That's kind of mean. That's insensitive. 
But people could die because right. they didn't lose the weight because you won't tell them you're the CDC. Tell them to lose weight. Right. And so it's like, how much do you really care? Mm. You, see, you keep saying, well, you got to help the people, help the people. But like, tell them to lose weight. But you couldn't do it. And they actually could die from that. But don't you think then the thinking is they already know that being fat is bad for them. So they probably would have lost the weight. So it's probably not going to help. And maybe you muddle, muddy the message or something. Maybe. But I think it's better to do that in the long run. You ever heard the, the lobster thing? A lobster starts out in a shell, and he's got that mushy, you know, insides, the organs and everything, right. and he has a shell around him. Eventually, the mushy part grows and grows, and it gets too big for the shell, and it hurts. So the lobster goes to find a safe place. He sheds the shell, and that hurts, and then a new shell forms over time, and now he has a bigger shell. Then again, a few months later, the lobster grows again in the inside, the organs. So he has to go shed a shell, and it hurts, and it hurts, and the shell hurts, and it's piercing on him because he's growing. And he has to go shed the shell. The point is, you do that like five times in the lobster's life. And it's painful and annoying, but it has to be done. But nowadays, if the lobster had a doctor, he would go, I'm hurting. The doctor would go, here's a Klonopin, a Percocet, a Vicodin. Just deal with the pain, Mm. and he'll never grow. Right. The pain is good. The pain is good. And I think a lot of this shit in society is we need to put pain on us because of the modernity and the Uber Eats and the the internet porn you got gay porn is unbelievable it's now. amazing these it's days it's amazing and you, you know, How people do having you know less about sex that? i dabbled <laughs> people are having less sex cuz they got porn at their fingertips they got ai sex robots all this shit so going to hit on a woman or a guy is a little scary there's rejection there's pain there's nervousness there's awkwardness i'll just jerk off to porn yeah so all these things you get fucked in the end. Yeah. It's good in the moment, but the instant gratification is not worth the long-term effects. You remember that? Uh, that's a great speech. You remember right. that uh, that sunscreen song that said, uh, live, yes. in, live in New York once, but leave before it makes you hard, hard. and live in Southern California once, but leave before it makes, makes you, you soft. soft. It's true, isn't it? It's true. It comes back to the New York fucking you in the ass thing that you yeah. were saying earlier. Like maybe that's part of... It was a great place to be in my 20s, man. Oh, it's it a great, great town. It's great. I mean, you must Jeez. have cleaned up with the fellow. I got cleaned beautiful up eyes. with the fellows. And listen to this accent. It sounds so exotic in New yes. York City, right? Yeah, you're cute. You got a oh, good shape. Thank you very much. Uh, the, on the question of being fat uh, and dying of COVID, also when the monkeypox came, ah. right, it was a gay thing. And the they didn't say that. Nothing. Nothing. They wouldn't say it's gay. They just said, uh, like, you know, vulnerable communities. <laughs> <laughs> Vulnerable communities should should take precautions and see their doctor. Well, I even I, as a card carrying member of your homosexual community, yes, I thought that that vulnerable communities because we, it was just after COVID. I thought, oh, that means old people and people with immune suppressed conditions, right? Yeah, I didn't realize. Oh, it means the gays. Because you don't know who the vulnerable community is unless they name them. And they didn't name them because they didn't want to make it sound like gays were dirty. Yeah. Are, I think because AIDS got all... That's right. That was super gayed up. Yeah. So I guess they don't want to do that. But again, let a gay guy know. Now he can take precautions. Let a gay guy know. There That's all we're saying. There might be one instance. We're just so worried about backlash and tweets and everything and being called a homophobe or racist. That's... Uh, that's the one biggest thing we worry about now, more than anything. There's a fentanyl crisis in America. That's back burner compared yeah. to saying the wrong thing and having a black mermaid and all this shit. Mm. So we're so focused on people's feelings that we're actually hurting them in the long run. I like it. And no, no one's going to think that the health minister is uh, homophobic for saying that it, the virus is homophobic. Aha! The virus is the bigot. Good point. Put the virus on the on your in your sites. Yeah. Got your target. That's a t-shirt. The virus is the bigot. <laughs> the virus is the bigot. Can I ask a gay question? Please. As an ignorant hetero? Yeah, of course. You don't have gay voice. You don't have what like the gay... Oh, I don't have a hello, gay voice. you know, the stereotypical. It's interesting, isn't it? But yeah. I see a lot of guys doing that. And I've always wondered... I have gay friends who... You know, Tim Dillon. Mm. You know, Tim Dillon. Yeah. Big, big homo. Yeah. He doesn't do the gay thing. He, you no. wouldn't know he was gay no. at first glance. Mostly because he's so disheveled. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's super gay, loves the loves the dong. Yeah. But why do some guys and my friend is an anesthesiologist mm. and he said when people come out of the gas, they mm. tend to talk like their real self. Wow. And then you know, he'll say gay guys come in very flamboyant. And then when they come out of the gas, they're like, Where am I? And then oh. twenty twenty minutes later they're like, Woo, that was crazy or whatever the hell I don't want to do the voice. Fantastic. But, you know, isn't that fun? 
you should do the voice, but at the same time as you do the Al Jolson hands <laughs> and a little bit of blackface <laughs> yeah. with your gay bashing. For gays, uh, it's jizz hands, it's j- not jazz <laughs> hands. <laughs> it's, inter- it's a really interesting question, but I, I mean, my hunch has always been that there are people who are, and this comes back to the trans and like sex and gender mm-hmm. question as well, that I think there are probably a lot more people who would probably fool around with members of the same sex if there was no uh, such thing as being gay. I mean, you I look at like right. you know different societies where it's been a little bit more accepted, and there's the been Greeks. more. Bo- yeah, that's right. Uh, they, you know, we know this, uh, but I think, I think right. that once there's there the like the people who are the most flaming, who are like who really don't like girls at all. Yeah. Maybe they, maybe they have tended to be more effeminate and more on the kind of female side of the masculine sex. Yeah. And that all of those mannerisms are uh. part of that. It's almost like a form of high camp or something. It's like I'm an impersonation of a lady type. Oh, uh, interesting. That's my assumption. And there's actually always been as many gay guys who don't speak or like guys who yeah. would like to be with guys who don't speak like that, but they just haven't felt the need to come out because maybe they're kind of more okay with, yeah, I could probably end up with a, with a girl. Sure. I could probably, I mean, I wouldn't, it wouldn't kill me. I wouldn't love it, but yeah. it wouldn't kill me to be, spend my life with a woman. Right. Maybe it's that kind of thing. And part of the concern of some people in the gay community about the increasing fashionability of the idea of gender and sex just being a spectrum Mm. is that maybe some of those younger people who do feel like they're not real men because they're so effeminate right are gonna assume that they must actually be trans girls instead of being guys yeah i think that's that's happening so you're gonna lose some cohort of people who who could have led happy lives as gay males and they're instead gonna think that they're actually trans girls yeah yeah it's possible and that there's tough. like it almost reinforces this idea of masculinity as being a very particular traditional old-fashioned set of masculine stereotypes right well said who knows i'm just yeah just curious about that here's another question please you talk about punching up at the big uh the grand scheme whatever you call it the wizard of oz behind the curtain this guy if you say the wrong thing you're in trouble whatever don't you hate this? I, I feel like this wasn't around 10 years ago. We could all just live our lives and get laid and write <laughs> jokes and do make money. And now it's like all we talk about, every time I talk about it, people are like, oh, here we go, two white guys talking about cancel, blah, right. blah. And I'm like, I know, I, I'm annoyed too. But like, it's such a prevalent cloud looming over all of us that you have to like think about it. I, I'm writing less material now because there's so much... Okay, if I say this, then that means that I have to appease to this camp, but that camp will be mad. So I'm like dodging laser beams as a comedian constantly, mm. where I used to just be able to tell a joke. Can so, you not just not censor yourself at least for the when you're when you're working out the material? I can, but I think the audience is sitting there analyzing, going like, "Well, wait, wait, is he a this is a Biden guy? No, wait, is he Trumpy? Wait, wait, is he right? Is he left? Is this guy homophobe? What's going on?" And you know, right. you're like, you're not even listening anymore. You're just picking apart mm. problematic moments maybe and it's it's a uh, it's a bummer it's just a bummer this is a, a part of life yeah that it we all is, man. Ha- we didn't talk about this shit 10 years ago no and then they go hey you fascist and i'm like well you just said if i don't agree with you i'm a bad guy so why am i the fascist yeah i'm not making any laws or rules or yeah. canceling people yeah i don't know I hear. I mean, there's, I also think of the opportunity cost. As you say this, like, you know, we've just spent an hour talking about it, talking around exactly. this. Like the things that we could have been talking about. Could have learned which, about I your mean, life, your boyfriend, we your dog. Look, I don't even have a dog. I it's don't either. damn partner doesn't want one. <laughs> yeah, really scratching a, a raw a raw wound here. Yeah. I Sorry. Wanna, I want to get myself a golden retriever. But Ooh, I, that sounds nice. You, can you get one in? Where are you in Brooklyn? Is there enough room? Uh, I wouldn't. It feels almost like animal abuse, right? And I don't want to. I have a cat, right? Easy, low maintenance. The low cat's like a pillow head. That's what I want to get to a cat as well. I got a couple of kids who want a cat. They're five years old. Oh, you got kids? Yeah, they're twins. How do you like that? I don't recommend the first few years. Oh, really? Are you on the kid path? Yeah, maybe in like a year. Right. You just got married? Yeah. How was that? It's good. It's good. 
Yeah. It's, about, it's exactly the same, basically. Exactly the same, right. I will say I think she chilled out a little bit. Oh, that's nice. Because, you know, she's like, when are we getting married? I'm getting older, kids, yeah. eggs, all that shit. So once she got married, she was she chilled out, and that was nice. Right, okay. You went back to New Orleans for it? Yeah, Moved home good? town. Great. Fun wh- have you been? Oh, yeah. Fun town. Fun town. You know, it's a weird, it's an interesting town, though, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's the got, most. It's got so many different sides to it. Most unique American city, I'd yeah. say. Most it's not even American. It's it's like a different place. Completely. It feels Europey and gr- mm. grimy and hell, Hades vibe. It's got everything. Yeah. With ghosts and gays. Yeah. And, you know, f- f- crawfish. I got. Uh, I was. I was due to go to New Orleans for the first time on the weekend that Hurricane. Uh, what was not Sandy? Katrina. Was, Katrina. That was when I first went to New York for any prolonged period of time, and I oh, was wow. going to go that weekend. Uh, and instead, I went maybe about a year later, and rented a car and drove around some of the areas that had been devastated. Mm-hmm. And that was. I mean, honestly, after driving through it, I had pulled pull the rental car over and I burst into tears. It was, really? It was... It was yeah. What a gay... No. It was, but, <laughs> but no, it I, was, I agree. I did it too. It was like... I mean, it was beyond places in the developing world. That Crazy. Been, like it was... And you could see the... They would spray paint on, the, on a house, like... X or O, or that means two dead bodies, a dead dog, empty, you know, heavy stuff. Heavy. And it didn't seem to have been rehabilitated in any Not really. meaningful way. Like there were people still living. Yeah. There were people living in these shells of houses. And 100%. like I could see just figures like, and it was, it felt incredibly dangerous. I don't know oh, what yeah. the people are doing when they're living there, but... It felt like a breakdown. It felt like it felt dystopian and like Walking Dead in a yes. way that you know, going through India where people have no money. Doesn't. Right, it is that. There's this lower Ninth Ward, which is right by the river, and it got hit the worst. But it was always poor, gang, scary, and they got less help. It's it's fucked up. But they yeah. the rich neighborhoods got more help. And when you t- when you were talking about. You know, needing to be to have some kind of suffering, and like if you're a poor kid, uh, you know the lobster analogy and that. It would when you say you grew up poor, was that rough? Oh yeah. Well, it was rough for me because I was the white kid in the neighborhood, so everyone assumed we had money because we were white, and we didn't. So we just got robbed as as uh, poor people. Right. It sucked. So you have a TV, and that's gone. Yeah. You know, and then just the idea as a kid of being like, well, there's someone in my house. I'm upstairs in my room and the alarm is going off. Shit. And you're just like, oh, there's a guy in the house rummaging around. It's a little, I think that's why I'm so skittish. Fuck, man. Fucks you up a little. Then you go out in the neighborhood and you got the bike and they go, hey, white boy, give me that bike. You know, you're like, ah, you get the the hell out of there. I got my bike stolen so many times. Right. And it's, uh, it's not good for the psyche. What was useful from that experience growing up poor? I think uh, reality kicks in. You kind of learn what's what's real and what's not, and uh, the world isn't fair. And it's it kind of almost this survival thing kicks in. And I think when a survival thing kicks in, you really enjoy the good times more because you have so many bad. Now good shit happens and people are mad about the good shit. They're like, it's yeah. not good enough. Yeah. You yeah. know? And uh, everybody's like, I need to be happy. I don't feel happy. And I'm like, you got it so good. You don't realize mm. it. Uh, the reason you're unhappy is because how much how good you have it. If right. you had a little struggle, you might be happier. Ironically, right. so that that part was good. And then, uh, I you know I, I learned a lot. I made friends. I, I learned how to adapt and make it work. So I wouldn't change it, but at the time I would have changed it. Yeah, did it make you tough? I think so. Mentally, I got beat up a lot. I'm not a good fighter, but uh, I think mentally, yeah. Because you're in a tough industry. I mean, that's. Yeah, as a comedian, you've chosen a life that where you constantly get beaten around the head. It's a you got to be a sewer rat. I always say you got to just figure it out. Even during the pandemic, we're up on the roof, we're in a field telling jokes. You got to adapt. Mm. You got to audible, play an audible. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so there's the there's the respect in which your actual career is incredibly stressful because of the ups and downs, and you never know how you're going to feed yourself in six months' time, depending right. on what you can write and whether you're or not you're still the hot shit. Yeah. But then there's also just the experience of standing in front of a whole lot of people who aren't laughing, which yeah. must oh, happen God. sometimes as well. Still happens. Does it? Yeah, and it annoys the shit out of me when these young comics will DM me or, or message me and go, 
hey, can I pick your brain over coffee? And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. You think talking to me is going to help you at all? Go out there and do it. Yeah. You know, it, it's the worst the worst question. I think they think it's flattering in some way. And I'm like, well, also, I don't want to waste my day. <laughs> That's another I'm thing. getting lunch with Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. I don't need to get lunch with you. Exactly. Yeah. And trust me, I, I'm aware of how grateful, I'm grateful that I can have lunch with Jerry. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't Childhood it? Childhood hero, you know, it's it's... As he would say, it's amazing life is that long that you can watch him with your parents on NBC, primetime, Seinfeld, must-see TV, and then one day do all these open mics and travel the road and get married and blah, 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 and then have lunch with him. What would you have thought if you to- if I'd told you when you were a kid in New Orleans that you were going to have lunch with Jerry Seinfeld? You'd have his number on your phone. I wouldn't believe it, and I would I would sit in my room and just think about it and jerk off furiously masturbate (laughs) with the person next to you on the subway exactly that doesn't exist in new orleans yeah uh i remember you you're living the dream you made it i mean the funny thing about life is when you're living the dream you're always looking at the next dream right so true you never you know it's you never stop to smell the roses so true i mean i came here with a friend who wanted to meet you he gave up his day just i was like i don't think you do the pod he's like i don't want to do the pod i'm not an idiot i just want to meet him i'm a fan so that's pretty cool this is the he's doing your uh just to explain the the listener he's he's your support act your opener that's right that's the word and uh, when I showed up at the studio here, uh, there was just this uh, stranger waiting yeah. on the on the sidewalk, and uh, uh, he introduced himself to me. Lovely young gentleman, cute kid from Adelaide, and uh, yeah, a fan. I mean, it's it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I remember even seeing Letterman, you know, my greatest hero, talking about how he was just always obsessed with and paralyzed with uh, self loathing, and yeah. that he hadn't succeeded <laughs> he, properly. He didn't get the Tonight Show. You know, for a long time, Jay Leno beat him in the ratings. Yeah. So he was a failure. That fucked him up. I know. <laughs> but like... he, he shaped uh, so many comedians now. I go to comics houses, Letterman stuff everywhere. Uh, yeah, we're just not happy. But Letterman said something that always stuck with me. Because he so rarely does interviews and stuff that he, I read, I think he did a Rolling Stone interview and he said, I don't think I could handle not being a celebrity because I'm so sensitive that I need that extra niceness. And I completely re- agree with that. I can really right. relate to that. Right. Another fun Letterman thing. Remember when he got Me Too'd? He got, uh, you know, he fucked those interns. And then he talked about it on his show, mm. and he got applause. They, they got, everybody loved it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was being blackmailed. Oh, was he? Do you remember that? Yeah, I guess I forgot about that. Le- <laughs> Letterman, did, Letterman only came out about it because he was being blackmailed. What I was just going to say was... Um, Colbert said something about bombing, which is like the you have to. The, where, when his life changed was when he learned to love bombing, mm. and like sort of treat it like almost a curiosity, mm. like not feel threatened by it, but just sort of almost to go into almost once it started happening to just go with wow the bomb. That is that is a skill. I don't have that. No, I, I panic and frazzle and freak out. I unwind. Yeah, it's completely. Interesting. But he's a he's a very talented guy. I don't love the political, no. you know, like I loved Letterman because it was a comedy show. He's throwing shit yeah. off the roof, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. He's fucking with Madonna. Yeah. But now it's just so political. I don't want left or right, Greg no. Gutfeld or yeah. Colbert. Yeah. To me, I'm like, can't we just have fun? Well, also, I mean, I wouldn't mind it if it was smart, but it's, nah. yeah, a lot of it's not clever, you know, I, yeah, which is watch. weird. I mean, I haven't, I'm talking about, uh, you know, from the early days of the Trump administration here, like I haven't seen... I don't watch these things anymore, but uh, you know, I I was very interested in what Colbert would do with Dave's show, and you know, for about a year, it was just coming out and doing uh, Donald Trump is dumb right. jokes. Right. Like I think we've all got the memo on on that. You yeah. know, On that cliche, <laughs> this is not revel- a revelation to me that this yeah. man is not the the highest IQ who's but ever been in the White House. That's... Huge ratings because I think people just. He was in office. People hated him so much. Yeah, you know, such vitriol towards him that I think they're like, ah, I need, the, I just need a guy in power with a suit on saying how stupid he is. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But I mean, you think, I mean, what I hope Colbert can, and what was amazing about Colbert when he had his Comedy Central show and John Stewart, they were able to be political, but they were so smart right. and unexpected about right. how they were doing it. It was never straight. They were never just coming at it straight. You know, yes. you never knew what they were going to be saying. Uh, completely. And same with Johnny Carson and, and Letterman. I mean, Letterman was, yeah, he wasn't political, but man, he was clever. Like he was so pitching so high. Yeah. And you, you mentioned the Madonna interview. Have you watched that in the past five years? It's been a while now. Go back and watch it. Okay. It's amazing. 
Really? I saw it again during the pandemic. I went back and watched it. It's on YouTube in two parts. All right. Where Madonna just comes out and the first words out of her mouth are, fuck you, Dave. Ah, uh, <laughs> no, it's been too long. It's incredible. And he just, he, and she won't leave. She won't leave. She's just sitting there. And he was the like, best in those moments. He was so good. Yeah, he's got a, fa- a smile on the side of his face. Yeah. It's all tug and cheek. Yeah. And she's like, uh, why do I have to leave? Why do we have to put up with this bullshit? Why can't I just stay here forever? And he says, it feels like you have, doesn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so quick. So good. Uh, so where do you see, uh, what's your ultimate aspiration? What would you want to do? Where do you want to be that will not have you looking for that next thing, where you'll actually feel successful? Well, that's a tough question because I, I love this level. I like doing the Enmore Theater three times. I can walk down the street, I get one guy going, hey, comedy, and that's it. I can go into a restaurant, I can eat, I can go on a trip, sell out a theater, and then just live my life. So right. it's tough because I feel like I've hit the ceiling, and I have a Netflix special coming out in two weeks or whatever, and I'm nervous about, part of me is like, I hope it kind of just does okay. <laughs> I don't want it to blow up. <laughs> so uh, fame is, does not seem fun to me. Right. I like a nice niche level of weirdo who knows who I am. Right. You hit me up, I'll, I'm happy to do a pod, but I don't want to be important or have people come to me for whatever or people get mad at me and paparazzi. All that shit is a nightmare. You wouldn't do it? You wouldn't have Jerry's, Jerry Seinfeld's life? No. Too much. Too much. He likes it. I just think it's too much. For It'd me, be surreal, I, I'm wouldn't strong it? enough. It'd be crazy. Yeah, but I guess once you once you have the the wealth and the assets to insulate yourself from it, true. Like it's one thing if you're Prince Harry who never chose it and frankly, uh, you know, doesn't have you know has to keep generating money yeah, somehow yeah, in right. order to insulate yourself from the from the hysteria of the British tabloids. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if you're if you're cashing royalty checks from the biggest sitcom of all time. You're just like, well, I don't have to worry about people at airport security True. noticing who I am because I don't use airport security because yeah. I have a private jet which goes from a private terminal and it's just like my own little bubble. That makes sense, but I think the little things would bug me. Walking down, I, we went to lunch right when we left the restaurant, swarmed photos, right. picture. People were ready with pictures, like sign this. Somehow they knew he was there. It's bananas. Really? Yeah, it's next level fan shit. Yeah, I mean he's an American icon. You know, so uh, there's so there's some blog where people are like, "Oh, I, Jerry's at the Bro- Brooklyn I guess Deli." So. On... I guess so. But they they were on it. They had headshots of him ready. Really? Yeah. And I didn't leak it. You didn't leak it. <laughs> no. He says. No, I didn't leak that. So someone, isn't that interesting? I want to I want to know how that happens. Is there yeah. a, is there a social media like account which is like where's Jerry or something? And Probably. someone in the restaurant texts somebody and someone tweets it and then I, there are people Kim Kardashian that. they all have that I think where I they imagine just, that would be the pits oh, I'd fucking hate that nightmare yeah and then you got kids you try to go somewhere with your kids and uh, your wife it's, mm. it's a lot can't take them to the park no can't just sit there but here's the other thing every celebrity I've met who's at that level they wouldn't change they wouldn't do the other way right so as, as much as many pitfalls as there are they're not losing that jet no, but then maybe that's because they were the type of person who wanted it. True. And you don't get it by accident. Good point. So you've already weeded out the people like you and me. Right. Who right. wouldn't want it, you know, because you're not going to get it by accident. But look, I used to move furniture. I was a janitor. To me, this is this is This, this is, is great. Life. I mean, that's so true. So I guess lastly then, do you have any practice or any – like the, getting into – you mentioned Sam Harris, right? You know, the the thing that he does that is the most fulfilling to him and his followers uh, is meditation. And yeah. Is, like, is mindfulness and is just being present mm-hmm. and is kind of trying to recognize that the monkey mind is not the same as us. Right. Right. And the, our tendency with the machinery in our heads is to spend all our time regretting the past and yeah. you know, rethinking things and worrying about the future and never actually being present yes. in the moment. Uh, do you uh, dabble in any of that? And do you have any, like, if the, I guess if the if the question is not like what do you want in the material world, maybe it is like how do you develop the mental state? To That's be what I got to work on. That's a good present. answer. I, I'm doing everything I want career wise, so I need to be a better mindful, relaxed, more uh, accepting, stable person. That would be nice. A, a good hill to climb. Right. 
you're going to need that when you meet the natives in New Zealand. <laughs> rip you limb from limb. Oh, Mark, God. Well, I got uh, one opening for me, so that, that, that gives me some points. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Uh, great to talk to you. Thank you for being on the show. I know you have to go, and especially doing it before the show. How do you do this before the show? Now you have to go and relax. This is better for me because is it? I, I'm not thinking about the show. Great. The more you think about it, the more the anxiety and the, the evil thoughts kick in. What show? Exactly. There is no show. No show. There is no spoon. We're all zen. Thank yeah. You, Great to Thank talk. you. Thank you.